Uh, welcome. I'm really excited today because uh, I am kickstarting my new series on science. Uh, in some sense, I started my website because I was so motivated to talk about science. So I'm glad that I am finally able to do that now. Uh, so let's start this series with me asking you a simple question. Who are you? Well, you could answer by telling me your name that I am Raj or I am Gaurav or I am Sonal. But my question is a little bit deeper than that. Anyways, let me ask you another question. Where do you come from? You could again reply that I come from San Francisco or I come from New Delhi. But what I'm really trying to get at is how, who are you and how do you find yourself on this planet Earth? A better answer could be, if you think philosophically, is that I am the child of my parents and uh, I am here because they gave birth to me. However, that that still leaves a little to be desired because, because if your parents gave birth to you, I could ask who gave birth to them. You could say my grandparents, but then I can ask who gave birth to your grandparents and the question continues. So the general question is, how did life on this planet begin? That is the question I'm actually trying to get at. Now there are many possibilities. One of the possibility is that all of the men and women that we see around us are children of the first man and woman that existed long time ago. That all human beings that we see around us are descendants of one man and one woman. And that's one hypothesis that could or could not be true. Another hypothesis that people come up with is uh, that life on this planet has always existed in the infinite past just like the numbers on a number line which never end if you take a look at number one zero minus one minus two it never ends it goes back into the infinite past similarly life has always existed on this planet and that's another answer which one is correct we will see later in this series and that's ex actually these are some of the question kind of questions that science likes to tackle and we could ask a similar question about our planet did planet earth have a birth date is was there ever a time when there was no earth i mean was there a time when it was created who created it how was it created and similar question follows about other heavenly bodies that we see around us like the sun the moon and the stars when how did it all begin did it ever begin or has it always been here things like that so these questions are so confusing and and there is no once you start asking there is no end to these questions and they become so philosophical that they become disturbing people start wondering why am i here what is the purpose of my life and oh and what happens when i die uh, do i become a star uh, and, and and these are important philosophical questions some people take the route of god they they find the answer in god they they say that god created me and the purpose of my life is to do good things and that's that's a reasonable answer that uh, answer gives comfort and solace to a lot of people but i hope you would agree with me that that the answer still leaves something to be something to be for fulfill i mean the question is still slightly unanswered and the answer is incomplete here here is the problem if god created you my question is who created god does god also have a birthday now you cannot answer that oh god has always existed nobody creates god because if that is true why can we not make the same argument for the human beings on this planet why can Nobody has to create them and they have just existed in the infinite past. Suppose gods were created by their own gods. But then the question just bubbles up one level above. Who created the gods of the gods? And then what about the gods of the gods of the gods? And the infinite recursion continues. I mean it goes up to infinity. So the answer really is, the, nobody knows the answer. But, but that's one problem that I find with God hypothesis let's talk about science science essentially tries to answer some of these questions obviously some questions are much more concrete much more practical much more answerable 
and science can answer them precisely. One of the questions is, does Earth have a birth date? And why does when I see the moon, it changes shape every night? These are the kind of questions science can precisely answer. Some questions it may not answer, it cannot answer, is are other philosophical questions, and these are important questions, mind you, uh, is, is there a God? Uh, uh, what is the purpose of our lives? Is it, th those are the kind of things it may not answer, and we will not talk about them in this series. Uh, uh, what is science? Science basically is, is the study of our universe. In science, we like to measure, observe, and theorize about, which means to, to understand and write theory about the rules that govern the universe. It is, it is now in science widely believed that the universe works according to certain rules, and, and science essentially is, is basically to measure, observe, and, and understand those rules. It's a, it's a collective human effort, everyone working together to try to understand how the nature works, how and, and to understand the natural phenomena such as let's say light storm and and uh, other other I'm just trying to understand the rules of the universe a very important milestone in the in the scientific history is is when Newton is Isaac Newton published the theory of gravitation uh, it is an important milestone because you see he showed he just not gave a theory he also showed that the universe works in predictable ways that that it follows certain rules and that you can observe measure and 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 write theories about those rules and and so that is a very important milestone uh, believe it or not at that time uh, one of the leading many astrologers astro astronomers were like Galileo himself were working on the problem that why do planets go in circles what keeps them moving and one of the theories at that time was that oh there is an angel uh, flying around f flying at the back of the planet that is carrying it uh, providing force to the planet to move it uh, the problem of course with this hypothesis was that you couldn't see the angel uh, and so Newton basically got rid of all this superstition put in a theory that explained us how it actually worked he most important of all I find is that he showed that you and I can sit down with a piece of paper some pe pencil and some thought and do some thought experiment and can really try understand when we can really write down and understand how the planets move around each other and we can predict concretely for example when the next solar eclipse is going to be so okay now you could say that all this is good why should I care about science well my answer to that is Consider an event. Let me tell you about an event. On July 20th, 1969, a person was in a lunar module. He was he was in an aircraft, kind of. He was he f that's, those two people flew to a dark surface and they landed there. And the person came out of the module and he put step on the dark land. and And that is when he said these famous words that that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. These words, of course, were spoken by Neil Armstrong when he landed on the moon. Now, imagine the significance of this event. Our ancestors, few thousand years ago, who were hunters, lived in the jungles, would come back to their huts and would open up, would light the fires and would look at the night sky and would just wonder when they looked at the moon. They would they would see it changing shape and they would they would really wonder what what is it and and they would they would see it changing its shape and they would probably think that it's probably a god of some kind and it probably controls our fate and what happened few millennium later we built a spacecraft and we flew it and we went to the moon and we just we found out that it was no different than planet earth there here are some photos from apollo 11 mission this is buzz aldrin uh, whose photo neil armstrong has taken you can actually see uh, Neil Armstrong in the visor of, uh, of Buzz Aldrin and here is the lunar module uh, in the photo the next photo which I also find very very good all of these photos are taken from NASA's website whose reference I've given at the end uh, is this is this is the this is moon uh, this is the module in which they flew this is Neil Armstrong taking the photo and 
the sky looks pitch black because there is no atmosphere but it's and it is lit by the star which is sun and and so there is no real mystery here uh, so, and and this this is our earth this is our home as seen from the moon and it is here where our ancestors sat and and tried to wonder what the moon was and this is we are here on the moon looking at planet earth i find this a very significant event uh, how did we do it well of course science because of science we were able to figure out exactly how to fly an airplane we were able to figure out how how far the moon was we were able to figure out how much fuel should be put it in our aircraft so that we can fly it to the moon and various other things uh, question could we do it if we didn't have gravity or didn't have science of course not and that's why this is one example of why science can be so much fun uh, another very important point is that if you understand how the universe works if you understand the rules of the universe you can make friends with those rules and you can use those rules in your favor imagine a game of chess being played by two people one person has no idea what he's doing and is just moving pieces at random other person understands the rule of the game very well who do you think is going to win the game who do you think has the advantage obviously the person who knows the rules of the game and that is my point in the last few centuries we have taken great strides in understanding how our universe works and as a result of which the results are spectacular for example we understand how electricity works and we have in our homes light all the time we no longer sit in darkness and wait for the sun to come up for another example in olden days it was believed that the earth was flat that if you took a boat and sailed in the ocean eventually you will hit a wall and you will just drop off and people were very worried to sail afar do you think global trade would work if people didn't even go from one continent to the other there would be uh, people will be just isolated in one place and the other place and they would even never know that oh there are other human beings which live across the ocean and so that is one example another example this is this is the chemical structure of of molecular structure of uh, penicillin which is a drug we have made in the last few centuries great advancements in biology we know so much about our body and we have been able to reduce the mortality rate as a result of that science also helps us survive 66 million year, year 66 million years ago our planet was abundant of life the life of course was not mammals like us it was it was dinosaurs and dinosaurs roamed the planet freely however one day a huge asteroid hit the earth uh, and the entire dinosaur population was wiped out because the energy released was equivalent of a nuclear war and while that can still happen today I think that chances of that are much less uh, because uh, we have so many spaceships and satellites that are flying in orbit that we are not essentially flying blind here I think NASA and other space agencies will be able to give us heads up warning in advance and if we can detect that then maybe we can take some measures as launching a missile to try to deflect the the asteroid or take some other steps but at least we'll stand some chance we will not just wake up one day like the dinosaurs uh, were and taken by surprise and wiped out of the planet uh, another fact and I kind of find this a little depressing maybe you wouldn't uh, is that due to science we know that our Sun is a star and and stars essentially shine because they are a source of energy and they burn fuel that is stored inside them sun shines because it burns hydrogen uh, stored inside it uh, but of course like any other source of energy they run out of fuel one day and our sun will too and we can actually predict that this will happen 10 billion years from now now I know this is a long shot argument and 10 billion years is a long time but uh, but still we know that our time on planet is is limited is fundamentally limited uh, 
of course one could say that by that time we will kill ourselves by by either a nuclear war or by some other disaster or that we would corrupt the pop the environment so much that that man will die out but assume that we survive assume that that we survive few billion years from now at that time sun will start to to run out of fuel and we will have to move out of of our planet now what that means is that if we want to survive past that point in time we need to be prepared and sufficiently advanced so that we can migrate to some other planet some other place in the universe where we have to search for such place that harbor conditions suitable for life and to be able to and technologically advanced enough that we can move to such place what has science discovered so far let's talk about that so a brief time timeline of scientific evolution will be and i read a lot of text on scientific evolution i find that a lot of discoveries were made in uh, 500 in the period of 500 to 200 bc uh this was done by the greeks and the egyptians of that time and they made great advances in in science math and philosophy this was the time of socrates aristotle pluto pythagoras archimedes these are some of the names that come to mind and the greeks and the egyptians were in their real prime and they made some huge advancements in including geometry but then earth plunged into a period also known as middle ages or the dark ages and the the scientific growth kind of slowed for about 2000 years it picked up again when the renaissance which means enlightenment came in europe in the 16th century and since then the scientific growth has been really tremendous and we have seen many great scientists and great scientific theories to name just a few we have seen newton galileo carl gauss a great mathematician and einstein a great physicist uh some of the discoveries of course there have been many but some discoveries of the last few centuries include the theory of gravitation by isaac newton the theory of evolution by charles darwin where he proposed that all species evolve from a simpler one that all life on this planet has evolved from a very simple single celled organism the theory of relativity by albert einstein where he proposed that space and time are two are not two different things but that they are they are interlinked that he he proposed for example one of his strange ideas found to be true that you cannot no matter how hard you try travel faster than speed of light which is roughly 3 300000 meter per second another thing we we have made huge advancements in in space exploration we have made man flights to the moon one of the spacecraft voyager has sent in photos of jupiter saturn and has already flown out of the solar system we have made huge advancements in biology large number of diseases including tuberculosis polio have been eradicated or almost eradicated from the planet and minor diseases or sickness we can just easily fix we have so much advance we are so much advanced in biology and medicine these days what will we cover in this series the primary motive of of me putting so much effort in this is to put science in its historical perspective scientific theory is are boring what we learn in school today is 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 just the theories we never talk about we never talk about why someone discovered that theory in the first place it's like you you are told or taught about the answer but you never discuss the question which that answer is for so so we will essentially do that we will talk about the scientist who discovered those theories and we will we will talk about the problems they were trying to lo- to solve which eventually led to them discovering those those uh, uh, theories for example we will talk about eratosthenes who was a who lived 2300 years ago and who was with simple thought experiment able to compute the size of the earth imagine 2300 years ago your friends are telling you that oh we think that the earth is flat and you believe that earth is not only round you are actually able to compute that i think the earth is this much round and his estimate given 23 years ago was actually pretty accurate think about this for a second how will you do it if i didn't tell you how big the earth is how will you measure it how will you do a thought experiment to compute that it's it's a 
it's a good question Isaac Newton 16th century uh, 17th century I should say uh, Einstein could not figure uh, sorry Newton could not figure out a very simple thing if all things fall if Apple falls if I jump out of window I fall why doesn't moon fall towards the earth why doesn't the Sun fall and that is a very simple question, very reasonable question. Even a child could ask that. Led him to led him to to discover the theory of gravitation. He really figured it out how the planets set in motion. We will talk about Charles Darwin. Darwin was uh, he set out on a five-year uh, expedition. He he was on a ship called HMS Beagle. He was in the middle. He explored a lot of islands and looked at various species on these islands in the middle of Pacific. And eventually, he, after all of his observations, he came up with the theory. The theory today we know as the theory of evolution that all life on this planet comes from single-celled uh, organisms. That life evolves over time. And he also gave a theory of natural selection, which we will talk about. Uh, We'll talk about Albert Einstein, one of the greatest physicists of of of, uh, of last uh, of all times, I would say. Actually, uh, he he discovered relativity. He was actually trying to understand the nature of light, what light is, and during during his process of answering those questions, he he wrote about relativity. Uh, so that's it. That is what we will talk about. I'm really excited about it. Uh, stick around uh, these are the references thank you for watching next lecture will be coming up soon thanks